majority of those were just whip, whipped off. Wilson was away on holiday for a fortnight, and I thought, right, he's out of the way, and to do what I want for once without any influence from everybody. So I, I worked in the evenings, and a, a weekend in particular in my garage. Yeah, and I knocked up with these moulds out of old boxes, which I took from the works, old crates, and made the in initial moulds for the majority of those. No, the tree bark ones. The ones of black tree Including bark. that. Yes. Well, um, that tree bark came just a little bit afterwards. How did you make yeah. the moulds? Nails, Tintex. All sorts of things. Um, old Blake, Blakey's sort of old. We used to put on the soles of boots and heels of boots. Anything would give a texture. You, you, you just made up a, a, a model? No, um, no, I made a, 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 a negative and guessed at what it would look like. I see. So I just made, I just made a quick sketch and just cut these pieces of wood up and nailed them together and took them into the works with a hinge on one side and a rough handle on it to go over and shut it. Mm. So would you actually blow glass straight and into blow it? blow glass into it, you could get two or three off. But before the, the wood burnt? Well, it was burning all the time, of course, in some ways, and sometimes it, it, it helped to have it partly burned, sometimes it wasn't so good, and then if the job was successful, <coughs> they use that mould and... Um, we at that time had a, a tame mould maker and the other side of the road was a foundry. And we'd um, take it along to the foundry and uh, say, here, can you get a castle off this? He'd cast them in metal for me and I'd take them over there and talk to them nicely. They'd take a casting off and hopefully it would come out and I'd get something like I wanted and then knock that about and fire it up and then get our engineers just to fix some handles on. One of the most involved people. It's all it's sort of all I don't know how I did it. <laughs> Try this. This was the one that I thought well I'd do something really big and imposing while Wilson's out of the way. No, no restrictions, I was sort of running my side of things without him there and I just dived in and we went on holiday on the Friday and I worked on the Saturday and did this and along with another one I think and, and uh, it was rather large but um, I thought well that's quite imposing. Um, Let's try some more. And I spent the whole week and the following weekend making more and more and more of these moulds. <laughs> when he came back, I got a. It was a plan drawer, and the top of it was full of these things done in different colours. Yeah, yeah mostly in that rather dark colour. Is that the largest piece? That struck me a bit tight. Basically, it's really the largest, yeah. And there's another one, just a slightly round. Uh, round yeah, that was done later on. I wasn't very keen on it. You don't see many of those around. And then the, the brick ones, which are rather wonderful. Mm, yeah, that, that was nice. What that side was, was the squares mm. and circles. Mm. And that was about the second piece I did. Was this in the 70s or the 60s? Pardon? Was this in the 60s or 70s? Yeah, that was the second piece. Yeah, that was in the 60s. It must have been, it was before, certainly it was before we did the same pieces in the orange colour. So it must have been. Was the orange the last colour in that range? No. Um, I don't think it was. I forgot the sequence now. I'd have to look at some of the old catalogues. I've got some somewhere in the attic. Okay. What was William Wilson's reaction when he came back off holiday? I expected to get something of a raspberry because it wasn't in his style at all. His style was very beautiful, slick shapes. He was very clever and it was very nice. Very nice lines. He had a nice feel for outline. 
and I expected him to be repulsed by these things. Anyway, I had them sitting, sticking there, I didn't say anything. Came walking in on a Monday morning, so sort of, you could always hear Wilson's footsteps come. But I know his footsteps. And he came down the corridor, and I heard him coming up, and I thought, oh gosh, now what? And he was absolutely. <laughs> I think gobs gobsmacked is a common term for it. I think. He was he was quite taken back and um, much to my surprise and relief of course. God gracious, what are you doing? Sort of thing. Never that. Which was very pleasing to me because he wasn't a man. He was very forthright. and fairly blunt. He didn't like something to tell him. I was rather pleased by that. There were many big ones that produced because we see lots of small bar, uh, small pieces, well, lots of that side, but not very many big ones at all. Well, naturally, the smaller pieces uh, was just quite pricey. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most popular, naturally, were the pieces that fitted into the price range. Partly because of the influence of buyers. Buyers are very, in my experience, have always been and probably still are very reluctant to take a chance on it. And heels, if I can name a name, never would buy it. They were the first people to have a chance. They were the first buyer to come in to see that range. Oh no, that's not heels, that's not us. They were sorry afterwards because they, for some time we couldn't make enough of it. And um, if we'd been able to make a great deal more, we would have made a great deal more money. I think we made more money in the two years, but that was really popular. And uh, then we never made. If we'd been able to make more, we'd have made more money and fewer people would have been able to jump in the bandwagon. There's a lot of people were influenced by the textures uh, virtually and copied some of them, particularly the table. Well, nothing like that had been done before in, in this country. It was totally no, uh, the nearest to it was some less textured pieces, um, not not in the glacier texture, but there was a little bit of experimental stuff, um, Swedish. And about the same time we were doing it, um, they tell us, the Finnish people, um, when we introduced it, I saw something somewhat akin to it, which they had brought out some textured stuff, so it's one of these things, I think, which just happened. Tap your work on it, as it thinks. Yes. Yes. I think he was probably bringing some out about the same time. I think the summer we brought it out, he brought some out as well. A different sort of texture. They, they didn't have Not so rugged as ours was. Well, that was a bit brutal in some ways. <laughs> it had drawbacks in as much, of course, the inside of the things were, were not easy to clean. You, know, so oh. you gain something, you lose something. In a practical sense, it wasn't necessarily ideal. We weren't looking for practical things, we were looking for something different. For itself. Yes, purely and simply. Something that looked different on the market. Who were your biggest customers? Well, we, we had, had a uh, customer range varied tremendously across the board, many, many of them were what the day little gift shops, or I suppose they were in those days, but gift shops were different at that time, but uh, country towns and seaside towns and posh places like Harrogate and places of that sort, there was a special sort of rather swish upmarket gift shop, there always have been, there are more of them about now I think, but we had Selfridges, John Lewis, Lewis Group, um, Harrods, 
heels. A lot of our plain glass were sold by heel and heels. Um, the very plain pieces early on. So, that depended on the buyer. When they had a change of buyer, we dropped out. They took a dislike to our pieces. I don't know why, really. It's just that um, if a buyer likes your work, then he buys it, he makes up his yeah. mind, he's responsible for it, or it used to be, you know, that's quite the same now, I don't know. Do you, when did the um, glacier and texture vases come out? Was it the 60s, the early 60s, or the late 50s? I've forgotten. Uh, did, did you, um, prior to? Shortly after, it was a continuous run. Shortly yes. after the penny, through thruppy bit vases, as the people yeah. called it, was made, then came the bricks, three bricks, and yeah. we thought, well, that's rather nice, we'll make a small version of that, or at least we were asked to buy it. sales, the sales director. Well, it's all very well, but that's too expensive, and we'll make a smaller version of it, and so did that. <coughs> yeah, this, uh, this is a small one. Um, so that one was first, then that one. Then I was looking for ways, this this, this was pieces of copper wire with some staples over the top. It's a bit like bamboo. It's, yeah, it ended up looking that way. That wasn't, <laughs> wasn't something I aimed for. And then in various, oh, that one was an early one. And that was just simply pieces of wood, and what I liked the idea of that one was and to get something which was more this shape. So that was pieces of wood cut off like that. Um, it was um, asymmetric in some senses. It wasn't round, it wasn't square, it wasn't anything. I think it works very well, it's one of my favourites. I love that one. I don't think I've got one. And then those, and then Oh, that one. Then we began to look at people wanted smaller pieces. And in, to my mind, after having done that one and that, I felt, oh, that one was no real one. On that. I bought one of those yesterday. I mm. think it was that, 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 and that were all done at the same time. Then came that and the small ones. Then that one. Then we became nitpicking. I never liked these. Will you make more small pieces? And we're trying to find different textures or trying to find different techniques and they were never the successful things like that. What was this based on? Um, nothing in particular. <laughs> I just did a sketch. I thought I yeah. cut it up and I'll take that bit cut out of that board there and plonk it on the side of that one there. And then the same the other way. And I wasn't even certain that it would come out of the mould, to be honest. <laughs> These were nails, mm -hmm. nail heads. Tin tacks, I think, same as those were. Those were that was gouged out of the piece of wood to stop it all burning away was the initial idea, and I thought well, I'd get a texture at the same time to the, the, the nail head will stop it burning, but will also give a texture. And I banged all these tin tacks in on that one. Was this the most expensive one? This chunky bit. Do you think? To manufacture? Yeah, and, and to resell and to sell. Well, it would have been because it was the largest, and it, um, being large, it was slower, more glass used. So Probably accounts for fewer of them, few of them turning up. Yes, um, um, I don't think people knew how to take it either. I mean, there's flat, there's something different about it, and odd, and a lot of people 
just said they wouldn't appreciate it and they wouldn't do with it if they had one. This was, must have been a popular seller because we see lots of these around. I suppose it was fairly popular. I don't know that it was, we've sold more that, that many more than that one. Yeah, it's a lot more of these, don't we? Do you? It's possible, I would, wouldn't, wouldn't know exactly what the production. But mainly in the smaller size, which is a few of them. Oh, yes. Lots and lots of yes, the smaller yes, size. Yes. That one never sold very well. Those were fairly popular. Didn't sell many of those. No. That was tremendously popular. Sold a lot of those candlesticks. Why did some of them have ground off tops like that and others not? Um, primarily because that was very difficult to reheat and keep it reasonably to that odd um, rectangular shape and the same would apply to that one whereas that was round and you could knock it off, put it in the punty, reheat the top and it would be finished as it went in the layer by knocking the um, punt out of the bottom. That one also was more or less overall. We could finish it, it gave it a slightly rugged look, but and that finished off all right. That for cheap was done for cheapness, was ground off and also so that it would stand straight. So that was an, an overblow as we called it, it was blown like that. Yes, so there were different commercial reasons which all had to be taken into account. I mean, that had a slightly odd, odd top. It wasn't practical to hand ground that or that. And um, we used to square those up by putting the tools inside and opening them out across the corners, oh, which would okay. give quite a good finish to them and the hand melted finish as well, which was preferable on the majority of these pieces. So the largest proportion of them were melted at the furnace, as with that, 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 that. So there were... And these were all yours? Yes, yes, all, all, all of this, all of them. Yeah. Some of which are curled as I see them now. That, that was very nice, very successful. I always liked that one. What do you think of that one? Yeah, it's great fun. Yeah, I love that. So I was surprised how many we sold. Yes, yeah, they turn up quite regularly now. Mm -hmm. So quite a few must have sold. Yeah. More, but more of those than that one. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was very nice. It was one of the early ones. That that was made out of sections of wood carved out. Circles cut out with a saw, little large lumps of wood, and just nailed one on top of the other, and it saw the whole. And it worked. I'm not sure it saw only at half or three, I forgot. And the texture on, on the bark type ones? Well, those were bark. Um, in fact, I found some a dead tree and Oh, that's rather nice texture. And um, took some of this bark, which I brought it back home as one Sunday with a, a drive with the children when they were young. And uh, made up this basically round three part mould. I've got one of them, part of one of them in the garage. And um, cut out all these little bits of bark and stuck on the wood, one of these wood glues, for the first trial. Very successful. It, it, it was very successful. And we did those before we did the uh, paperwork. They're some of the most common ones, they must have sold extremely be, well. Well, we've manufactured those um, day after day after day in the different colours. Because they're very popular. the blur was like they were very nice to make, they were efficient, um, straightforward pieces, which was good for them because it was good for their piecework rates. Which <laughs> yeah, had a big influence on everything. 
it's something they could produce. Were, were they paid the whole chair? Paid a rate? Oh, it's proportionate, yes. Yeah. Yes, they had a piecework rate that was worked out between I, I always try to distance myself from it. But it was um, worked out with the management um, and they would put an experimental rate on it. Which was always very extremely difficult to get them to change afterwards. It was always put on them initially as a trial period thing that you try to knock their rate down later after what was the correct sensible rate and of course it was the worst impossible right and hands mm -hmm. but um, she was a reason why I kept away from it because that's right. not the sort of thing I was there for. And I suppose they had a union? Yes, a very good one actually. Met Ronnie Wilkinson. Not yet, he, he's on the list isn't he? Yes, to the he's spoken to him on the phone. He get hold of Ronnie Wilkinson. Um, Ronnie knows a lot. To mention all, he was there a lot longer than I was. He'd been there for a boy. And um, he's a mind of information, particularly from the point of view of glass making itself and the attitudes of glass makers. And he's got some different views, but he was he used to run the union. And he was. Um, I think he was pretty good at it. He was aware of, looking at it from the management side, he was sort of always aware of the fact that there was a management view as well as the workers view. He wasn't, he was well, out for what he could get for the men, but he was aware of the fact that the company had to survive before he could pay them some money. Yeah. And so he was a fairly sensible person as a union. Did you go on to, um, were there any, uh, ranges of yours before the texture pieces or after the texture pieces? Did one. Which, which of your pieces um, did you design prior to the texture pieces or did you design any pieces mm -hmm. after? 